chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Thankful to be in the service again this morning. We're glad to see each one that's come this way to be with us. I've got a thank you card that I want to read to you. It says, we thank each one who contributed in our pounding. We truly are, aren't able to express how thankful we are for all that you do for our family year-round. Your love and kindness for our family, along with your faithfulness to the Lord, make this a joy, joyous place to labor and serve. We love each of you. You're, you, you are in our prayers. Thank you all again. Please continue to remember us in prayer, Trent, Crystal, and family. And we do thank you so much for all that you do for us. Matthew chapter 27. I'm going to begin reading in verse 19. Matthew 27, verse 19. This here is speaking of uh, Pilate. When Pilate comes to the place to judge the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, and when he was set... Uh, sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas to, and destroy Jesus. And the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all saying unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but, he re but, rather, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged to Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. I'm going to stop there with verse 26. Here we see uh, this, this decision. This is kind of a, a section where we're really looking into uh, the decision that Pilate made concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I, as a kid, as I would read this account or come to it or hear it read, however the case may be, I would I, I kind of blame Pilate for everything that took place. For whatever reason, I didn't pay attention to the crowd. I didn't pay attention to what all was going on around him. And as I began to get older and really began to dig into this more, I, I kind of began to feel sorry a little bit for Pilate. Uh, for whatever reason, Pilate was in a in a condition where he was he, he really is in a, in a very extreme circumstance uh, to very much a, a whole lot of pressure that was on Pilate at this particular time to make a decision concerning Christ. Now, I guess one of the reasons I say feel sorry for I guess I, the the right way to say it would be I, I could sympathize with him uh, because of the amount of political pressure that would have been on him to try to persuade him to do a certain thing. Our, our politicians do face a lot of pressure and uh, to do the right thing and sometimes those those decisions can get very difficult no doubt. Uh, any decision that we make is, is a difficult decision when you add pressure to it and sometimes when you add pressure to a decision we have a, a nature about us to want to just kind of slip out of it. Uh, if if I'm not careful, I can be that way myself. I notice my, my my very own nature that uh, if 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 enough pressure is put on me to try to to go one way, or maybe I'm being pulled in different directions, and I've got one group wanting to go this way and one group this way, and it's just a lot of pressure back and forth, then I'm natured to just say, you know what, I'm not deciding at all. I'm out. And I think that's what Pilate was trying to do. Uh, this is, to me, it's always been intriguing that Pilate would wash his hands before the people and for the multitude and say, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. Uh, what, what, what was the reasoning behind it? What was Pilate attempting to do? And for some reason, I've never been able, in my mind, to nail down completely what is it all taking place just in this one thing. But notice to begin with the pressure that Pilate under. Pilate is not only under pressure from the Jews, 
But he's under pressure from his own wife in what decision to make in this. His wife has let him know that this is a just man, that it's obviously something that is different than normal in that his wife was having dreams about this decision that Pilate was trying to make. And so she's trying to persuade him. No doubt Pilate's own conscience is, is pulling him in a specific direction. And it, even if his conscience, then the Spirit of God also pulling and maybe persuading Pilate into a specific direction or some direction. And so Pilate's being pulled in all of these different ways. And you can see that as, as he's making the decision that he, okay, as soon as he finds out that he's of Herod's jurisdiction, well, he sends him to Herod. And I think Pilate at that moment takes a deep breath and just, whew, I dodged that one. But as you continue reading, you find out what actually took place was Jesus answered Herod not a word, and so they sent him right back to Pilate. And so now Pilate thought he was out, but now he's right back in again. He's, he's dealing with this difficult decision again. What is he going to do with Jesus? Is he going to crucify him? Is he going to yield to the political pressure that he's under to do the unjust thing and crucify an innocent man? And so that's the, that's the question that he's, he's under. And so, again, you see with Barabbas, the idea that he's trying to get out. Barabbas was a very evil man. Uh, I, I was trying to remember, I don't know how the Bible described Bar Barabbas, if it uh, scri described him as being sadistic. I think, if I, my memory served me right, the Bible describes Barabbas as being sadistic, and I'll let you look that up. That's a common, uh, uh, a, a common uh, quality in serial killers. That, that, that's just the type of man that you're looking at is a very, very evil man. And I to, again, I, I think they probably found the worst one Pilate did, found the worst man that he could put up against Jesus in order that they would release Jesus, and that would take care of this whole political situation that he's in. And yet that didn't take place. So again, he's got to make this decision. The point is this, no matter what Pilate did to try to get out of making this decision, he had to choose. He had to choose. And so finally at the end of it, what he did was he said, I, I, I wash my hands of this. Now today we still have a saying maybe based on this I'm not sure exactly where it comes from I would assume it would come from, from Pilate it even goes further than back than that and we'll look at that in a moment but I, I, what Pilate is doing is he's, he's sidestepping he's, he's saying I'm, I'm through with this I'm washing my hands of it if this is what y'all see fit to do you do it but I'm not responsible for it I'm out of it and I am completely removing myself from this decision. There is no responsibility of this that is going to fall on me. I'm free. I am, I, I, I am what is he, how does he say it? I am innocent of the blood of this just person. The question that I want to ask to you this morning is that, does that actually then say that he's innocent? Just because he stands back and he says, you know what, I've, I've done everything I could try to do to persuade you correctly. You see, Pilate, had the, he had the ability as the political leader in this specific time to say, you know what, I don't care what y'all want, I'm not crucifying him. He could have done that. Yeah, there would have been a lot of, probably a, 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 lot, a lot of cost associated with that decision. He would have had to quiet down the Jews somehow. It would have probably took the Roman army to stop what was, what was going to take place had Pilate done that and he knew it. But even then, Pilate had the ability to do that. You see, sometimes we face a decision and doing the right thing we know is going to cost a lot. 
And so we are almost drawn to do something different or maybe just sidestep the decision altogether because we don't want to do what's wrong in the situation, but we don't want to do what's right and then have to pay all of the cost of that. And that's kind of where Pilate was hung up. And so he just said, I washed my hands of it. I'm not going to decide at all. Y'all go do it. Y'all figure it out yourselves. Again, this is a common response. I think this is kind of naturally where we find ourselves. And probably most of us would have followed a similar pattern if we were put into the position that Pilate would have been in that day, naturally speaking. Today, as pressure is put on you to make a decision, sometimes as this pressure gets on you, you feel like all you can do is just run and just try to get out and just try to escape. Today, as the Lord begins to burden your heart to make not the same, but a very similar decision that Pilate, had, that Pilate had to make. Very similar decision that you have to make because everybody's going to do something with Jesus Christ. And the Bible in Hebrews chapter 6 makes a statement about crucifying the Son of God afresh. And every person in their heart will decide what to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. And either they will trust Him as the Christ... Or they'll crucify him afresh. That's your only decision. And you may say like Pilate does, that I wash my hands of the situation. I'm not going to decide that's crucifying Jesus afresh. I'm going to get into it, try to show you a little bit about how that's the case. But maybe today you, you're, you're feeling the pressure. Maybe this morning you're lost. You haven't trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're feeling the pressure. Maybe you feel as though your, your family wants you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And they, they, I'm sure they do. No doubt everyone here would, would, would love to see you this morning trust the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning my intent is not to put the pressure on even more and, and cause there to be even more pressure on you, but to encourage you to just stop what you're doing and, and stop feeling the pressure and just trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Do what Pilate should have done, in other words. And not cave, not just cave to the nature, not just cave to, to running away and trying to get away from the decision and trying to just get the pressure off, but to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, we are all tempted. And this is, I think this is what for so long that I, I've missed, that I've, I just haven't been able to get into words. We are all tempted at that moment when the Lord is working in our heart and, and, and we're being burdened to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God's working. And I'll tell you, my family, I knew they wanted me to trust Jesus. There was a pressure that was on me and there was a temptation for me to wash my hands and walk away. Because I could get the, if I could just get the pressure to quit. Just walk away. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be faced with this decision right now. And it wasn't the fact, let me say this. Many people that reject Jesus Christ don't just say, no, I don't want Jesus. In fact, I believe very few that are faced with decision actually make that decision. And just say, no, I don't believe in Jesus. I'm not going to trust Him. I think more what it is, is most people say, I'm not going to face this decision right now. I don't want to have to deal with the pressure of this decision. I don't want to decide right now, so I'll wash my hands of the situation. And through doing so, have rejected Jesus Christ. The point that I'm trying to make with that is that if you're just trying to sidestep it this morning, you are rejecting Jesus. Because this is not a decision that you can just decide to do nothing on. 
just as Pilate was in the same situation, Pilate couldn't just choose to do nothing. He was the man with the authority. He was the man in the political position. And by choosing to do nothing, Jesus was crucified. And this morning, by choosing to do nothing, Jesus is crucified in your heart afresh. So often, our nature is to just escape the pressure of trying to make any decision at all. To just get out of it. But this morning, just as Pilate could not escape the responsibility Neither can you. But you have to make a decision. And by, by trying to wash your hands or kick that can down the road, Jesus is being crucified afresh. Now when I think of this, Pilate washing his hands before all of these people, the question comes to mind for me, why did, why did now, now the Bible tells us that that he, in verse 24, if you'll notice this, the Bible says he took water. Now, this wasn't something where Pilate would just made the statement, well, I'm washing my hands of the matter, kind of like we do today as a figure of speech. Pilate literally took water and washed his hands. Now, that, again, was a, it, it was a figure. He didn't do it because washing his hands was literally going to do anything. It was a, a figure, but Pilate had gotten that from somewhere. So where did he get that from? Where did that come from? And furthermore, the way we use it today, about washing our hands, where did that come from? Did it come from Pilate? I kind of think it did. I don't have any proof of that, but I believe it came from Pilate. And then Pilate got it from, I, I'll tell you where I believe. I believe Pilate took it from Jewish culture. And I think that was the culture of the Jews. That was the way things were done. And so he's telling them that I'm washing my hands of this. This is your decision now. But again, to show that he could not, that was not a decision that he could make. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. The question that I'm trying to present is that if the authority lie with Pilate and Pilate doesn't want the authority now which he's trying to get rid of and by washing his hands he's declaring that he's innocent of the blood of Christ and Christ is crucified and the only man that had the power and the authority to stop it was Pilate. Is Pilate really innocent? And he can stand out there and wash his hands all day. And he can put a pressure washer on his hands. But he can't wash away the responsibility that he had to make a decision. And it, that decision that he made led to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and he could declare his innocence all day long. He is guilty of the blood of Jesus Christ because it was his decision to make. That's true with us too. And we can do our best and wash our hands of Jesus Christ, but you cannot take away your responsibility in the decision. You're guilty. Notice this, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 1. If one be found slain in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it, lying in the field, and it, not, and it be not known who hath slain him, then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. And it shall be that the, the city which is next unto the slain man, even the elders of that city, shall take an heifer which hath not been wrought with, and which hath not drawn in the yoke. And the elders of that, of that city shall bring down the heifer under the rough, unto a rough valley which is neither eared nor sown. 
and shall strike off the heifer's neck there in the valley. Let me stop just a minute. What he's describing is if they walk upon a man in, in, the, land of, in the land of Israel, in all the land that God gave them, if they come across a man and this man's been killed, he's been murdered, slain, manslaughter, whatever takes place, somebody killed this man and he's just laying there on the, on the ground and they find him. They don't have a clue what's happening to him. Then God says, what y'all need to do is y'all need to measure, to, to, to get these fellows out here and measure to the city. All the cities that surround him. Whichever city he's nearest to, the elders of that city need to come out, take a heifer in a rough valley that hadn't, doesn't have, it's, it hadn't been eared, hadn't been sown. You kill that heifer right there. And then in verse 5, he says, And the priest, the sons of Levi, shall come near for them, the Lord thy God hath chosen to minister unto him and to the bless in the name of the Lord. And by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. And all the elders of that city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer that is beheaded in the valley. So he's telling them what they need to do is they need to wash their hands. Why are they doing that? They're declaring their innocence in the blood of this man. We hadn't killed him. We don't know who killed him, but it's not us. Why would God ask them to do that? And the reason is, he says, and they shall answer and say, Unto, uh, our hands have not shed this blood, neither our eyes have seen it. Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people Israel, whom thou hast redeemed, and lay not innocent blood unto thy people in Israel's charge, and the blood shall be forgiven them. Now that's interesting to me that God would lay the charge because the man's in their land. And it would seem to me that if the land of Israel, the land of Israel would somehow have a consequence for this man if this didn't take place. In other words, the land, something would happen if they didn't do this. Because of this innocent man that's just laid out, or, or this, this man that's been killed is just laid out there. But by, the, by the way, there's something about a man dying on a specific piece of ground. Turn with me real quick to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Verse 9, Genesis 4, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I, I know not, my, my brother's keeper. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. From the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall henceforth it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. In other words, because of the innocent blood of Abel, the ground is not going to bring forth her strength anymore. And so I believe that's what's taking place even in the land of Israel with this innocent man. And what God is saying is y'all need to get these elders out here and y'all need to sacrifice this heifer. Wash your hands over the heifer from the blood of this innocent man that your land would not be affected. And I think that passed down through the years to where Pilate's washing his hands before Jesus. As they spilled the innocent blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary, Golgotha, just outside of Jerusalem. And today they can kill every heifer. And they can wash their hands over the heifer, but it's not going to change the fact that they're not innocent You can de the, the point is that you can use this symbol to declare your innocence, your innocence, but it doesn't mean you're innocent. 
And they were to do this if a man was found. But what if, what if it were the case that the elders of this city knew who had killed this man and they were trying to cover up. And then they come out and they, they killed this heifer and they washed their hands. That we, we're innocent of the blood of this man that's been killed. Now. No, you're not. You knew who killed him. And you can stand out here and kill the heifer and declare your innocence all you want to, but God knows your heart. You're not innocent. That's the point. God knows your heart. God knows that you're not innocent. And you can do your best to try to wash your hands of the decisions of Jesus Christ, but God knows you're not innocent. God knows that Pilate's not innocent. And today you must make a decision with Jesus Christ. And either you will trust Him as your Savior or crucify Him afresh. There is no in-between. You cannot wash your hands of this decision. You can't just walk away from it and not decide. This morning you are guilty. And it's not just you. We all are guilty. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. Do I need to stand up here this morning and start naming sins to convince you that you've sinned? I don't think I need to do that. I think if you're under the sound of my voice this morning, you understand that you are a sinner. You know that. Because we all are. And you can probably come up and are coming up right now with some of the sins that you struggle with. But don't think this morning that you're going to one day stand before God and God will condemn you. You are already condemned. That is not future something that's going to happen. That's something that has already happened. He that believeth that Jesus is the Christ is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In other words, there's only one way out of this condemnation and that's through Jesus Christ. John goes as far in the last verse of the same chapter, which is John 3, to say that he that believeth not, the wrath of God abideth on him. In other words, you're not only already condemned, but God's wrath is already on you. You're guilty. We're all guilty. But today I'm not condemned, and the reason I'm not condemned is because of Jesus. It's not because of me. Because I looked to Jesus Christ to save my soul and he did. And today you can have eternal life as well. You can be saved. Another part of the pressure. I I heard a man, uh, maybe a a message the other day. Sometimes when you're preaching things you kind of can see it if you're not careful you can be preaching two different sides of the same coin in other words you're almost splitting hairs and so a man was preaching a message and I, I knew what he was saying and I agree with him but he said you can't he said you can't repent from sin and what he was saying is that you cannot to repent means to completely turn from and what he's saying is you can't completely stop sinning and that's true You can't completely quit sinning. You're never going to. And if you trust Jesus, it doesn't mean that you've got to completely quit sinning to trust Jesus. That's that's not true. That's false. But in order to get saved, you have got to repent of sin. What that means is you've got to turn from sin. Don't think for a moment this morning that as the Lord is working in your heart, that the devil won't pit sin against Jesus Christ. And the devil will tell you that in order to trust Jesus Christ, you've got to stop these things. What does that mean? I'm just, I'm going to be flat out honest with you this morning. I trusted the Lord at 15. I was right near 16 years old. I hadn't started smoking yet, but I wanted to. As soon as I could get to age, I wanted to start smoking. Why that was something to me, I don't know. But that was something I was, that I was burdened with. Not only did I want to start smoking, I wanted to start drinking too. 
And I knew that if I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, I could not live that type of lifestyle. I might get away with it for a little while, but I knew enough about God that knew he wasn't going to let me get away with it long. And I was literally, at right near 16 years old, having to choose smoking and drinking or Jesus Christ. That was the choice that was before me. And it was my sin, the things that I desired to do, or it was Jesus Christ. And when the Bible says to repent, it means to turn from this. To turn from the pleasure of sin. To turn from the life that you want to live. To Jesus Christ. This morning, if you're hearing loss, that's another bit of the pressure that the devil's going, because the devil's going to turn that pressure up. He's going to do everything he can to remind you of what you've got to give up to trust Jesus. But let me tell you the truth. There is no pleasure of sin that I have ever experienced. No pleasure of sin that I have ever experienced that is to, could be compared to the peace that Jesus gives me, gave me when I trusted him that day. The peace that Christ will give you is greater than any pleasure of sin that you will ever have. Not even to be compared. Today, I want to encourage you. Don't try to wash your hands of this decision. Don't try to just wash your hands of it today. And say maybe some other time, that's where Felix was at. Some of these other examples in the Bible that I could try to come up with. But don't put off that decision. You have the opportunity today trying to put off is nothing more than trying to wash your hands of it. And just walk away. But today you have the opportunity to trust Christ this morning. The Lord's working in your heart. The Lord's burdening your heart. You have the opportunity to be saved. And you need to trust Christ while you have that have time. Trust Christ while you've got the opportunity. Don't be like Pilate. Don't be like Pilate and try to walk away from it and cave to the pressure. But rather do the right thing. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can have eternal life this morning while we have a verse of a song.